I get questions all the time about some of the new concepts in machine learning and what they really mean. So for example, I get asked, what is one-hot encoding and why should I use it? It does seem very inefficient. You know, that's a great question. So let's take a look at the answer by digging into some code. We'll also see how a function called argmax complements this perfectly and saves you a lot of coding. Here's the popular iris classification data set with the values implemented in a JavaScript array. You'll notice that there are five values in each entry, four of which are features of the iris, and the fifth, which will be 0, 1, or 2, is the classification. The classes are shown here with iris setosa being 0, iris versicolor being 1, and iris virginica being 2. Now, this seems to be a really efficient encoding, but when doing machine learning, you often have to transform this into something that appears to be less efficient, such as one-hot encoding, which you can see here. And instead of 0, 1, and 2 for the values, you have an array with three values in it. And here we've only got three options of flower. If we had more options, this array would be much bigger. The index of the array is set to 1 for the relative flower. So for example, for Satosa, the first element is 1 and everything else is 0. And for Virginica, the third element is 1 and everything else is 0. Now this might seem a little strange. But when you consider the neural network that's doing the classification, they're designed with the number of output nodes equal to the number of classes that you want to determine. We're picking between three classes here, so I have three output nodes. These three output nodes will then produce three probabilities. The probability that you match class 0, the probability you match class 1, or the probability you match class 2. So it might look something like this. So now, when training the network, we can train it for matching values, i.e., if the flower is of class 2, we want to train it with a zero desired output from neuron 0, a zero desired output from neuron 1, and a one desired output from neuron 2. So that's one hot encoding. It may not look efficient from a storage perspective, but it maps really neatly to our desired output and thus is very efficient for training. Another function called argmax is then really handy for helping you find the desired values. So instead of searching through a list to find the biggest value, it would transform that list of priorities into something like this. And from there, you can derive the correct class. So let's jump back into the code, and we'll see this in action. Here, I'm going to evaluate a flower with the features 5.8, 2.7, 5.1, and 1.9. I know that this is an iris virginica, which is class 2, but let's see what the neural network gives me. We'll first take a look at the raw prediction, and then we'll take a look at the prediction that's been determined using argmax. Let's run this in the browser. When I refresh, the JavaScript will start executing, and here you can see my epochs and my loss at that epoch. It's steadily decreasing, which is good. And now I get my classification. And you can see that it has very low probabilities for 0 and 1, and a very high probability for 2, which is what we'd expect. If I then execute argmax on this, I will get 2. Consider the amount of code that you would have to write in this case. It's not a lot with just two classes, but if there were a lot more classes and you needed to find the biggest, you'd have a lot of coding to do. But argmax does this for you, given that these values are in a tensor. I hope this was a useful explanation of one-hot encoding and how it complements an argmax function. These are some of the concepts that are a bit different when you're coding for machine learning, but they're incredibly useful and powerful. One-hot encoding is great because it's a way of mapping your classes to the shape that a neural network outputs values, and argmax is a function that saves you writing a lot of code to go over all those values to find the biggest. There's lots of useful functions and transforms like these in TensorFlow, and we'll continue to cover them on this channel. So go ahead and hit that Subscribe button now. Thank you.